Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gori, consultant in reproductive medicine and surgery. Today I'm presenting a topic which addresses a very unique part of embryology. How often do we get to a stage of day five or day six and we have morulas, we don't have blastocyst, or if we have very early blastocysts and we get to day seven and there's nothing. Embryologists often say, if it's a marula, let's not transfer it. Let's not freeze it. They're right. We want blastocysts which can be frozen where the inner cell mass is created well or the outer cell mass is formed. And in those cases we say, absolutely fine. Now there is a study which has challenged this. And what the study did, it asked the question, is there a rationale of biopsy, doing a biopsy of embryos that reached the morula stage on day six when these patients were going through pre-genetic implantation? This has been done by an extremely good group which has a high standard of treatment and research What we know is the embryo development and morphology correlates with aneuploidy. And there's some evidence that very good quality embryos tend to have a lesser aneuploidy, while worse embryos have a greater aneuploidy. Routinely, molulas are discarded on day six of a PGS cycle. But also we see that in a large number of poor responders, they have slow growing embryos. Now, what do you do in these cases? So in this study, 763 cycles, 3,014 blastocysts, 1,260 morulas, 872 cavitating morulas, 388 compacted morulas. And what did the research tell us? And this is quite exciting. With blastocysts, 3,014 blastocysts, under the age of 35 years, the aneuploidy was 40.3%. But for those who did not reach blastocysts, the aneuploidy rate was 67% to 57%, depending on compacted or cavitating. When you looked at between 35 and 37 years, the aneuploidy rate was 50%, while in cavitating and compacting morulas, it ranged from 66 to 75%. As a woman gets older, 38 to 39, the aneuploidy rate was about 56% in blastocysts, while in cavitating morulas, it was 81% and compacting morulas, 88.9%. Beyond 40, aneuploidy rate was close to 80%, 78.3% in blastocysts, which means that only 20% of blastocysts were normal. When we look at cavitating morulas, and compacting molecules, it was 91.6 and 98%. And what does this tell us? This tells us that if your embryo does not reach a blastocyst stage, there is no doubt that many of these embryos will have genetic abnormalities. But to go back and say that is an embryo not reaching a blastocyst certainly genetically abnormal? The answer is no. There'll be some embryos that will continue to be genetically normal, but will not reach a blastocyst stage. When you look at the pregnancy rates, there's something different too. If you put a euploid blastocyst, the chance of having a live birth rate grows up to almost 55%. But if you put a euploid morula, the chances of having a live birth rate goes up to about 22% which means even if there's a euploid, there's something else that is going wrong, which we don't know. So reaching a blastocyst stage is essential for a pre screening biopsy or for replacement. On the other hand, if you see poor responders, if you get to a morula state, transfer them, don't discount them. Because what it tells us is, even at the age of over 40, the chances of normality is less than 10%. The chances of pregnancy are significantly lower. 
but there will be some of these embryos that will be genetically normal and should be given a chance. So if you look at the discussion from a conclusion, day 6 embryos have an acceptable and euploidy rate under the age of 40 years old. There's some relationship in morphology and, and euploidy. One of the things is that morulas which do not become blastocysts showed multiple chromosomal abnormalities compared to an euploides in blastocysts which were of single chromosomes. But there's a drawback in this approach. Have a look at the morulas. You can't differentiate between the inner cell mass and the outer cell mass. With blastocyst, we biopsy the outer cell mass. But here we don't. So you do not know the cells which you're biopsying are representative of the inner or the outer cell mass. Also, in women who are under the age of 43 or 40, who are poor responders, should we just transfer these embryos rather than discarding them? And this is something which we need to start thinking about. The science behind pre-genetic screening with array technology is changing. We are learning a huge amount from time lapse as well as from biopsy of embryos. We understand genetics slightly better now. We understand the role of mitosis and meiosis and how it has an impact on embryology far better. But equally, there is much that we still need to know. And it may be that there may come a time when we may be able to push these biopsies much better. Please share this video. Thank you very much.